Game started. Okay, I think it's time for me to play uh, D4. Yeah, I played E4 the last couple times. Got some Sicilians in an unusual game. Okay, D4, D5. Just 321. Okay, it's a Slav defense. <coughs> He's thinking about here. There's uh, what all kinds of moves. Although knight to f6 is the most normal. I suppose uh, bishop f4 is uh, maybe possible, but I think queen to b3 is a counter to that idea. There's just um, d6. I mean e6 uh, going into Cambridge Game Springs. Game adjourned. Ah. Oh. <coughs> Well, let's see if we resume. Game started. Okay, he agreed to resume. Oh, he lost some time there. Yeah, I uh, probably just lost his connection. Okay, yeah, knight f6, a normal move. <clears throat> I play this kind of quiet system where I just push the pawn up instead of playing a uh, knight to. Uh, C3. Don't want to encourage uh, black to take that pawn. So this is a semi-slav. Pretty typical setup. Um, this would be a lot like the Moran variation, except uh, instead of the bishop out, they would have the knight to d7 move in. <coughs> So, what do I want to do? Let's just castle here and wait to see how uh, how he develops. If he plays um, b5 to knock my bishop back, um, then I would want to play queen c2 to put the queen on the c-file here. Um, but in other cases, it might be useful to play queen to e2 to support this uh, push to e4. And, um, okay, let's uh, ask the bishop what it wants to do. <laughs> e3, see where the bishop goes. Just retreat. Okay, let's put the queen on e2 then. <clears throat> if the bishop is kicked, it can always go back to uh, b3 and c2, and then I can play queen d3 and mate <laughs> along that diagonal. <laughs> A simple plan. So even if this knight is exchanged off, this pawn is still defended by my queen, so that's why queen e2 is necessary before pushing to e4. <clears throat> but if I can establish a strong center and get away with it, hold, maintain it, should be an okay position for me. Also, e4 uh, opens a line for my uh, queen's bishop here, my dark squared bishop on c1, which isn't doing anything right now. So if he does nothing, I'm thinking of playing bishop, bishop g5 and uh, e5, pinning that knight and attacking it. <clears throat> Normally, uh, black will play something like e5 himself or c5 to bust up white center. And that might be a good move right here. Also gives him a little more space. Yeah, e5. Probably a good move here. So... <coughs> hmm. I want him to take... I, I don't want him to take, actually. And expose my uh, e-pawn to attack. He's got a pin on it from the rook. So um, I could take. 
knight takes, knight takes, rook takes, it would again open up this file, or I could push ahead with um, d5. <clears throat> And now if he takes, I can take with a knight. And we'll have kind of a symmetric uh, pawn structure here. He can take the uh, knight first and mess up my pawns and then take here. Maybe he's thinking about that. <clears throat> that might not be bad. Only my pawn structure is somewhat fractured. Um, but I would have the two bishops, so I might have some compensation for that. And after uh, bishop takes, pawn takes, and pawn takes here on d5, what would I do? Okay, but he didn't go that route. So... <clears throat> His pawn is hanging on um, c3, c6, I mean. So pawn takes c6, pawn takes bishop, pawn takes knight, bishop takes knight, probably. I mean, bishop takes pawn or queen takes pawn there. And he would have the fractured pawns. And I would be the one uh, that's given up the bishop there. Uh, still, it's interesting. Let's let's play it that way. <clears throat> now he can uh, return it to a symmetrical pawn structure by taking this knight, but I think he wants to uh, use his bishops. So I'm guessing he's not going to do that. Now, the knight is attacking the e-pawn and it's defended by the rook. Um, the bishop could be developed here. This is an idea. I developed the bishop with the idea of playing knight to um, <coughs> knight d5, putting pressure on the pinned piece. And then if he kicks the bishop, I'll come around here and try and pressure the deep the e pawn. I guess. Oh, you know, I should have. <laughs> I just noticed now I could have taken that pawn. <laughs> That's pretty silly. So he's leaving it there. Okay, he unpinned his knight. Server announcement. And he attacked my uh, b pawn. So now, if I take the c pawn, he takes my b pawn. I'm not not ruining anything. Although is this queen trapped? Let's see. Queen takes, queen takes, rook here. And uh, where does the queen go? I guess the queen has a square here. Oh, the queen could take the knight. So that wouldn't work. <clears throat> so I could play knight to d5 now, hitting his queen. He would take... I would take... And that doesn't look particularly appealing. There's um, yeah, I think I missed my chance there. <clears throat> How about the other night? Maybe knight to h4 to f5 might be an idea. But that does take pressure off of this pawn. Okay, let's just retreat the bishop, hit the queen. <clears throat> Didn't seem to be doing much anymore and more with the queen out of the way. There was no pin. And um, let's see, where does he want to go? He could go to uh, b3 an idea. I don't know if that's any good. I mean, I have knight uh, d2. Oh, knight d2 hangs the pawn. So 
Oh, there's something seems kind of suspicious about that move, queen b3. Let's see, um, but nothing, nothing is hanging. This is defended by the queen. Okay, so how about <clears throat> rook to c1, because he was threatening to take the uh, knight and just went upon or two. So rook c1, rook b1, then knight uh, d2 is an idea, hitting the queen and attacking this loose pawn over here. And yeah, I was sort of expecting that move. So he's double attacking here, but uh, I'm defending with the rook and the queen. So I'm okay now, I think. Let's see, unless there's a... Uh, ah, there might be one of these tactics. He takes, I take with the rook. Queen takes, and if a pawn takes... Yeah, there is a tactic there. Okay, so I'm down a piece, so I can't just ignore it. If I can take back with the pawn, then uh, he can give up a uh, queen for two rooks. Pawn takes, queen takes, rook takes, rook takes, check, and uh, knight. Knight here, I guess, uh, to defend against the mate on the back rank. Or rook takes bishop, queen takes, pawn takes queen. It's the same, rook takes. Is there a way to chase the queen first? Yeah, it'd be nice to throw in a move like <clears throat> knight to d2, but you can just take it with the bishop. So rook takes, queen takes. Can I do anything on that at that point? Man, that's annoying. I uh, guess I should have thought of that before the move. Okay. I'm expecting a queen takes rook. I'll have queen, knight, and um, bishop all lined up in a row here. He'll have a rook here, rook here, and a bishop there. And uh, let's see, the bishop can't immediately destroy me. Yeah, I think that was sort of forced. Check. And I uh, didn't want to use up all my time on these moves, which are basically forced. We'll see what he has in this position. Um, I need to uh, <laughs> move my king off the back rank in order to... Uh, Liberate my, um, ah, man, he's just going to gobble up all my pawns, too. Yeah, looks like I'm just losing this one. Let's see, the bishops are of opposite colors. <laughs> There's this faint ray of hope. Well, let's see, I thought he would just take the bishop. Uh, maybe he's got better moves in mind. Uh, can he play bishop to uh, bishop g4? No, he just takes the bishop. Makes sense. So no more opposite colored bishops. Let's see, I wanna play f3 or h3, probably h3. Just basically open up a dark square for the king to hide out on. <clears throat> oh man, he's going to come down to the eighth rank. Yeah, it's just taking me too slow to, uh, it's too slow everything. So he's going to play rook to uh, seventh rank. I'm at rook to uh, b2 probably, queen to um, e3. If 
he could double on the back rank with tempo, he could pick up another piece. So maybe that's what he's thinking. I'm going to play here, and then then um, I'm threatening at least to uh, take a bishop, which he's not going to allow. So now we can't play rip to b2 because uh, he's got a back rank problem. So let's pause and count the pawns. I have three, four, five, and he has four, five, six. So he's up a pawn, plus he has two rooks for the queen, which is usually worth a pawn. But with a queen and a knight, uh, there are always tricks. Tricks there are. So let's let's start playing. He gave himself a little lift, so uh, I won't be mating him if he uh, lifts his rook. Um, a lot of my loose pawns are already on um, <clears throat> already on dark squares where his bishop can't get them. But he can just go after him with his uh, rook. I'm not. I'm surprised he hasn't played rook b3 yet. But I have queen to um, d5 hitting these pawns. Plus I'm threatening to take on e5 immediately. So the game goes on. There's still some fight. <laughs> A little life, unless... Uh, or until he finds the, the next move to crush crush the life out of the position. If I could open up um, <clears throat> some lines to his king, there's always possibilities with the queen to, to get, you know, clever forks and things. Okay, now he's just going for... Oh, okay, he's picking up a pawn there. So this move um, hits the rook. So if he takes the pawn, I will grab his rook. Um, and can he move his rook with tempo to attack me? Um, if he does, I will take the um, e pawn at least. And we're down to a minute and a half, a minute and 15 minutes, so I have to watch the clock. Watch that. Be nice to get rid of this um, e-pawn because uh, the knight from there would uh, attack. It would attack both the... Um, both the c-pawn and also the square f7, which might be handy. Ah, now he hits the queen. Well, that was, that was a nice maneuver. So here I'm hitting f7 and I'm hitting... Uh, Time warning. Hitting f7 and I'm hitting this pawn. Isn't this good for something? <laughs> So if he defends f7, uh, oh, he can defend with the bishop. Uh, well, if he defends with the bishop, at least I get the e-pawn. He decided not to. Oh, that's weird. Check. Uh, yeah, yeah, he had to defend that because he's losing the bishop now. What do you know? I may have pulled this one out through... Through no uh, fault of my own. Well, just being alert, being tactically alert all the time. And that opens up a nice check here, which I should have thought about. Um, let's see. Check. What we can do here. Check. Yeah, that drives him to a square. Oh, he could go to that square. That's too bad. Hmm. <clears throat> okay, well, just got to play fast enough not to lose. I, I should be better here. Except he has two passed pawns. There's probably some uh, winning combination I missed there, too. <laughs> okay, he's just going to gobble up uh, more pawns. Well, he decided my uh, check was harmless. 
Maybe he's right, but let's try check. to check. And, um... Check. Yeah, I guess I don't see anything. That's weird. Check. <clears throat> I want to expose his king somehow. Well, my opponent may lose on time, or he may start moving quickly here. Uh, but his time is diminishing. This would still be a very tough, uh, a very tough game to fight. But I should be winning here. I have. Um, he's got two extra pawns, but I think he'll have trouble advancing them. Looks like Black well forfeits on time. Okay, uh, interesting game. I'm going to upload this one, and I'll uh, see you guys later. Bye.